What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to do something more casual. I'm going to rank different code editors in different IDEs on tier maker. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to be ranking code editors and IDEs on tier maker today. And I think about doing two of those rankings because this one seems to be very JetBrains heavy. We have IntelliJ, PyCharm, WebStorm, CLion and stuff like that. And this one doesn't have icons, but it seems to include more basic code editors. So maybe we're going to do both of them but I'm going to start with this one. And of course, all of this is subjective. You may have different opinions. I may insult you with my opinion. That's fine. Let me know in the comment section down below how much you love or hate my tier list and what you would change. So the first thing I want to do is I want to rename these categories here because I don't really know what those two words mean. So I'm going to say here, this is awesome. This is uh, great. This is okay. This is uh, math, and then this one is MATLAB. And then we're going to add an additional one, maybe, can I do that? Add a row actually below, not above. We're going to change the color of this row to gray, and I'm going to call it never used. So this is the one that I'm not going to rate. Those are the ones that I'm not going to rate because I don't know them or I've never used them. And I'm going to start with this one so that we get all of those out of the way that I don't know about. So I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. Uh, or maybe I do know what this is, but I don't know the logo. So is this something like gedit maybe? If this is gedit, I know what it is, but I don't know the logo. Um, this is, I think, Xcode from Apple, right? But I've never used it. And I don't know what this is. I think I know what this is, but I've never used it. And I think the rest, I should have used the rest before. So this is Android Studio, VS Code, Vim, IntelliJ, Notepad++, PyCharm, Spider, WebStorm. Uh, I don't know what this is. This is CLion. This is CodeBlocks, Notepad, Eclipse, PHP Storm, Qt Editor, even though this is not a text editor. Uh, is this Rapid Miner or Ruby Miner? Rapid data. I'm not sure. I've not used this. So I'm going to also move this one here. Sublime text, VS Code, or no, uh, Visual Studio, then NetBeans, Scratch, Atom, and Emacs. All right. So we're going to start here with um, what are we going to start with? Let's start with Qt Editor because I think Qt Editor is not an editor. So let's get this one right out of the way. Qt Editor is, I would say, okay because of the fact that it's not a text editor, I'm not going to really rate it. I think it does what it has to do. It's a GUI tool, basically. And I like using it. Uh, if it was a GUI editor ranking, probably I would give it great. Uh, but now since this is a editor ranking for text editors, actually, and for IDEs, I would say that Qt editor is okay. Um, let's move on with Android Studio. Now Android Studio, if this is Android Studio, I think so. I would give it a meh because uh, it it does what it has to do, but it it eats up all the system resources. It basically turns your computer into a heat heat producing radiator, so it's not really uh, that pleasant to work with it. Um, I also don't like I don't like Android development. Maybe that's the reason I put it here. So I'm gonna put it here just because I don't really enjoy using it. Then Notepad++, I would give it a grade because of what it is um, it is made for. So Notepad++ is nothing I would use for coding, but Notepad++, at least on Windows, on Linux, we have Notepad QQ, which is basically the same thing. Um, but Notepad++ is just my go-to tool that I want to use when I want to display something. I'm not going to really work on it. I'm not going to really edit it too much. I just want to see what's in it. I want to have some basic syntax highlighting and I want to have this simple. And for this, Notepad++ is really great. It's my go-to tool to open files. Unlike Notepad. So Notepad, the Windows Notepad is not what I usually use. I only use it when I really want to briefly look into a text file and that's it. So I would give it uh, maybe a meh with Android Studio here. Scratch. 
Scratch, for those of you who don't know what Scratch is, it's basically a programming language that, um, I mean, I wouldn't even call it a programming language. I would call it a programming environment for kids. But I learned coding as a kid and it completely pissed me off. So Scratch, I wouldn't say that Scratch has any, I wouldn't say that anyone should use Scratch because if you are nine years old, for example, and you learn to code the way I did, I was not enjoying Scratch at all. I enjoyed Visual Basic, you know, or maybe nowadays you would enjoy Python. So even as a kid, I wouldn't use Scratch. So I would put it in the MATLAB category here. Uh, then let's go for the JetBrains environments. Now, PHP Storm and WebStorm are probably good IDEs if you want to code in PHP or in JavaScript. But I myself, when I do web development, I keep it very minimal. So I usually do some Flask or Django application with a little bit of J JavaScript. I wouldn't actually use any of these two libraries. So I would put them here in OK, because probably they are useful if you're heavy on web development. I myself am not, so I'm going to just put them here. Or actually, I, I got to downgrade them here, because what I actually want to put in OK is C Lion. And the reasoning behind this is I enjoy coding C or C++, but I usually do it in the terminal in Vim or NeoVim. Because of that, I would say C line is a nice IDE. I have used it before, but I don't think it's completely necessary. So I would put it in OK. And I would put those two in mad just because I really don't 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 enjoy uh, coding in those languages. So yeah, let's put them here. Now Eclipse is interesting because Eclipse when I hear Eclipse, I associate it 100% with Java development. However, Eclipse can also be used for different languages, but it seems to me like an environment that I don't really want to be using to develop anything. So in Java, I would always go for IntelliJ. So maybe let's get this out of the way. I think IntelliJ is great if you want to work in Java. And I have worked a lot with IntelliJ, which is why I put it in great, not okay. Um, I would not use Eclipse. I would say Eclipse is at best okay, and NetBeans, which is also an alternative here, is meh. So that is my ranking order. When I have to do something in Java, I always do it in IntelliJ. If I, for some reason, cannot use IntelliJ, I would go for Eclipse. I would not use NetBeans. So this is my ranking here. Uh, what else do we have? Emacs. Now, for this one, I have used it before, but I know that there are a lot of Emacs fans out, out there. I know that Emacs itself is an ecosystem with the orc mode and everything associated with uh, Emacs. There's a lot to learn, probably, so I have a hard time rating Emacs because I myself have not experienced any of the magic that Emacs can provide. Uh, I know, however, how it feels to master a tool that's complicated and that's comprehensive and that you can automate a lot of stuff in. So I would just say, because I have not used it, I would say Emacs is okay, because if I didn't know about the magic of Emacs, so to say, I would probably give it a uh, lower rating here. But if I was using Emacs and if I was in Emacs and I know how to do everything, probably I would give it even an awesome. So I would put it in okay here just because I have not used it enough. Now, Sublime Text is a great editor, I would say, and Atom is also a great editor, but I don't really use them. And the reason I don't really use them is because when I do something that is more comprehensive, I, uh, in Python at least, I always use PyCharm, which is an awesome editor. This is a top tier editor, in my opinion. Um, and if I have to do something that's not as comprehensive, I always use Vim or actually NeoVim. But since NeoVim is not listed here, I'm going to treat Vim as NeoVim and Vim. And for me, this is by far the best editor uh, out there for anything that is not a huge project. So of course, if I have a ton of different modules, a ton of different libraries and a ton of different directories and everything is interconnected with uh, all the different files and all the different modules, then something like PyCharm or in the case of Java IntelliJ is very useful. But if I have, for example, a project with five files, I'm going to use Vim or NeoVim in the terminal just because I like the customizability and the key binds and everything. I use the key binds, of course, also in PyCharm. And if I, for some reason, need something in between, so I want to have a little bit more than Vim, but I don't need PyCharm, I probably go with VS Code. However, I myself, and I know I'm going to get hate for this, I don't really enjoy using VS Code that much. So I would put it in great and not in awesome. I know most people would probably put Vim in MATLAB and VS Code at awesome. This is my ranking. So Vim is for me 
top notch and VS Code is great, but I would prefer not using it, but something else. Uh, Visual Studio, I don't use it at all. I think it's a good tool if you are doing what it what it does. I myself am not using it, so I'll put it at OK. Code Blocks is one of the library, uh, one of the the applications, one of the IDEs that I started coding with uh, when I learned C and C plus plus when I was much younger. So I would say for nostalgia reasons, it is OK. Probably it is not even OK if you just look at it objectively. Uh, and then Spider is, mm, I don't know why I should use it, so I'm going to give it a meh. So yeah, that is my ranking for this list. Now, maybe let's mimic here the same structure. Let's say here we have awesome, we have great, we have okay, meh. Oh, this actually, maybe I was primed to use this category here. And then let's go with MATLAB here at the bottom. Let's add an additional one which is going to be gray and never used. And let's rate now all of those that I have not rated yet. So NeoVim to, to now make the distinction here, because here I said this is Vim and NeoVim. NeoVim would be in my case awesome and Vim would be okay. Because Vim is a nice editor to have everywhere. Wherever you are, you have Vim. This is very nice, but I would not use just Vim. I would always go for NeoVim when it comes to development. Uh, I don't know what ed is. I don't, uh, I already rated Adam. Gedit is okay. It's a nice tool to have. It's definitely better than Notepad uh, as a system editor. This is what I have here by default. Uh, Gvim is meh. I don't know why I should use it. I mean, this is a terminal tool. Why do I need a graphical user interface for it? So I would not really use that. Uh, Ultra edit is probably, yeah, not really good. So let's put it here at MATLAB. Um, or maybe, maybe in between something, it's not completely useless, but it's also not something I would use. So it's better than scratch. Let's put it here. Um, fleet is the JetBrains environment. I played around with it a little bit. It seems okay for now. Probably it's going to get much better, but for now it's just okay. Uh, code pen, isn't this, this online interface? I don't, if that is the online interface that is uh, available across multiple websites, I would say it's meh. I don't really enjoy using it. Uh, Nano is meh. And then we have, uh, yeah, that's actually it. So this is my ranking. This is the first list, then you can combine it with this one. And yeah, let me know about uh, your opinions. Let me know what your ranking would be, what you would change about my list, if you agree with it, or if you think it's completely uh, useless and completely wrong. So yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.